Look at this. See ya. That's insane. Berkeley Stunna is gone. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are out here kind of just goofing off to be honest with you, but I want to tell you guys a story. And this is the story about my biggest lesson that I've learned from using forward facing sonar. And I'm out here throwing a jerk bait right now, trying to target some of these suspended fish. Uh, but this lesson was actually earlier this year at Douglas Lake uh, over there in Tennessee. It used to be when I would pick up a jerk bait, and this is how forward facing sonar has just totally changed the game. But I used to pick up a jerk bait and I would always just automatically 10, 12 pound test, right? Most of the time, probably 10 pound test. Like, I just never really thought about it. And this year at Douglas Lake, when we were out there uh, for a BPT event, I was thrown to these brush piles that I had found that were really shallow. Like the top of them was six feet, five feet. Uh, they were in, you know, say 10 feet, but the top would be five or six feet. Well, I went up there with my jerk bait on 10 pound test, of course, and I start seeing these piles and start seeing some fish in them. And I would throw, throw past them, but with that 10 pound line, my jerk bait would sink too fast and get down there too deep uh, with that lighter line that I would actually get to the fish and spook them or run them off really uh, out of that pile before I had a chance to catch them. And this is when the light switch went off for me. And I really can't believe I'm making a video about it because it, it's such an important thing to think about every time you're out there using forward facing sonar. But I went up to 15 pound line on my jerk bait. I have never thrown 15 pound line on my jerk bait before, never been that heavy. And I don't know if that was just me growing up out in California and just the way we did it out West, but 15 was never even a thought really. But I was trying to think, okay, it's really cold. These fish are really lethargic. I wanna, sh I wanna present a jerk bait to them, but how do I do it in a manner where I can keep it above their heads? And I guess maybe you could have tried a shallower jerk bait, shallower running one. I was throwing this guy right there. That's the Hanky Panky Berkeley Stunna and they loved it up there. But when I went to 15 pound, it changed everything because now when I would throw past that pile and bring it above the pile, this heavier line wouldn't allow the bait to get down into the pile and spook them. It would actually stay above their heads, three or four feet above their heads. And all of a sudden it was like the light switch went off. These fish started rising out of the pile and started committing to the bait rather than running from it and getting scared of it. And so what I learned was that keeping the bait above their heads is the most natural way for the bait fish, uh, you know, in the lake. They're not gonna get right down there where the bass is and swim right next to where they're at. Like they're up above, the bass are ambushing them, ambushing them from below. And when that jerk bait gets down there right at them, that's not natural. That's, that's not what was happening. I was watching it on my screen. You know, I would even see the bait balls and they're all up higher in the water column. And my jerk bait at first was going even below the bait balls. And once that switched, I made that switch in the line size. It was like, not, I wouldn't say game over. I didn't just light the world on fire, but we made the cut very easily, had a great tournament and then even went to Cherokee and did the same thing. Those were all pretty much largemouth over there at Douglas. I caught a couple smallmouth, but then we went over to Cherokee and it was the same way. These fish were actually relating to boulders um, and they were in a little bit deeper water. So I actually went down to 12 pound test. But again, I, I figured out keeping that bait at least two feet. That was the closest I wanted to get to them. I wanted to keep it more like three, four, five feet above their heads, even in the cold water with these lethargic fish. That would be the way uh, that you would get them to commit to the bait. So something to think about anytime you're out there throwing uh, on suspended fish. You know, if you're throwing swim baits, jerk baits, anything where they're suspended like that and you know they're eating bait, you want them to come up to the bait. You never want to bring the bait to them. You want them to come up. Super, super critical. Now, in the springtime or summertime when they're related, you know, more to the bottom, that's when you can throw a worm and actually, you know, watch it sink all the way down into the cover, whether it's a 
brush pile or uh, you know grass or a stump, whatever it is, you can throw out there and watch your bait go down and work it through the cover. But I'm telling you guys, pay attention to what the bait is doing uh, when you're out there with forward facing sonar. And if you know the bass are eating shad, you wanna keep your bait at the same level the shad are at and don't go below that. Because if you start going below that, you're not gonna get nearly as many bites. As far as gear goes for a jerk bait, I used to also throw like 610 medium light rod a lot and I've kind of gotten away from that as well. You see me right here, this is with the Abu Garcia Veritas rod. This is a $100 rod or like $120 rod. And a jerk bait is one of those techniques that you don't need an expensive rod. And I actually get, you know, guys, I get my equipment for free, never gonna hide that. But still, I'm on an allowance, so I don't just get everything I want, and so I've gotta be strategic in how I order gear. And a jerkbait is one of the places where you can absolutely throw a $100 rod, no problem, and have the same success. You don't need to go out there and spend two or $300 on a rod. But I will say that I think a seven foot medium is better than the 610 medium light. I think you get further casting distance uh, using it, and especially with that heavier line, it just gives you a little bit more power on the fish. You can lean into them a little bit harder, especially if they're bigger largemouth that have a chance to pull you back into brush or whatever kind of cover they're coming out of. Uh, and a fast reel, guys. So you've heard me talk about gear ratios before, but a fast reel is critical on a jerk bait because when I cast out there, I'm all I'm trying to do is pick up the slack, right? It's jerk, jerk, pause, jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause. And all I'm using this reel to do is pick up the slack line that I'm creating when I give it a jerk. So jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, fast reel. Don't know how big he is. Almost feels like a catfish or something, dude. It's not, it's a bass. Not what I was expecting. <laughs> all right, guys, again, we're not in brush piles right now. We're just fishing some grass, but keeping it above the grass, keeping it above your target, wherever those fish are at. Wasn't expecting to get a bite there. That was cool. We saw a few fish on the screen. Not very big. Still cool when you're trying to tell a story and explain it. This is them right there. And again, you don't want to you want to cast past them every time, but you don't want to get your bait to where it's down to them. You want to keep it up here in that three to four foot zone because these guys, that grass is growing out of 10 feet, but it's all the way up to four feet. So you got to keep it above them. Let's see if we can get another one. There he is. Hey. Not bad. They were all, dude, look at them all too. They're everywhere on the surface. <laughs> all right, guys, that is how you want them to eat a jerk bait. I can't even see it. It's so gone. <laughs> I've never seen one. I've never had one. He did jerk bait that good. I mean, you can't even make that up. Look at this. See ya. That's insane. I've never seen one do that. All right, that is when they have absolutely ate it. Look, his gills are pushed out on both sides. Berkeley Stunna is gone. All right. That is officially the best I've ever hooked one on a jerk bait. You can let your gills go back normal now, bro. Three something pounder. He's a fatty. But again, guys, we saw him on top of that. Oh, he got me soaked. I mean, soaked, soaked. But we saw him on top of the grass clump and again, kept that bait above him. Had we got it to him or below him, no chance at catching that fish. Seven foot medium rod, guys, if you're gonna go throw a jerk bait, uh, fast reel and just pay attention to your line size. That's the most important thing that you can take away from this video. And honestly, one of the most important things uh, that you need to be thinking about every time you're fishing for suspended fish on forward facing sonar. 
So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, give us a subscribe, and make sure to tune back for more. We got all kinds of stuff coming for you guys. So appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.